Hello everyone, this is Jason from Prime Time Aquatics and today I wanted to talk about cichlids that are good for beginners. But I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I want to talk specifically about some of the fish that we have in our fish room that are good for beginners that are also cichlids. And therefore you might get a slightly different list than what's commonly found on the internet. So stay tuned. All right, everybody, so when we're talking about cichlids, I'm assuming that you already have some knowledge of fish keeping, right? You know about water quality, you know about the nitrogen cycle, you know how to keep your water quality up. Uh, cichlids really are for someone who's got the basics down. So this, I think, is a really good beginner fish uh, when it comes to cichlids, and that is Neolamprologus multifasciatus. We've got a species profile. It was one of the first videos we ever did. I will put a card in the upper right-hand corner. But these things are awesome. They've got such cool personality. Uh, they breed like crazy in the right setup. It's pretty cool because they stay small. These, you know, the larger ones are maybe an inch and a half full grown, and that's the males. And what's cool about them is they are very interactive with each other. Uh, they form this kind of community structure. Uh, they breed readily, and they don't prey on their own fry, which is kind of nice. Uh, they are small so you can keep them in small tanks maybe a few of them in a 10 gallon or a half a dozen in a 20 long and you might start to see some babies after a while but these are really cool fish and again as long as you can keep your water parameters stable uh, at least in terms of personality and temperament this is a really fun fish and something that I would recommend uh, as long as you've got your water parameters stable uh, it could be a really good entry into cichlid keeping. Another great fish is these yellow labs. They are an Ambuna type cichlid, but they're relatively peaceful. Don't have a whole lot of issues with them. They are, as you can see, pretty beautiful. I got one there, another one over here. Again, setting them up in an Ambuna tank, maybe like a 55 gallon with a couple other types of, you know, relatively mellow Ambunas could be a very good, successful start to cichlid keeping. But these are really cool fish. Again, relatively peaceful. I've had them in with haps and peacocks and even some community fish, you know, semi-aggressive community fish without any issues. So certainly an option. And I tend to like my yellow labs in with these guys here, the ACI, they're nice blue color. So you get the yellow, you get the blue. This is another fish that is relatively peaceful and you get them in, you know, groups of three, four, five, and they will like to kind of hang out with one another and they're not overly aggressive. They don't chase each other around too much. So definitely a cool combo with the yellow labs and the ACI. And I would say if you're going to be keeping yellow labs, this is another great fish that you can keep them with. If you're just starting out, maybe keeping African cichlids, you want an Imbuna tank, these red zebras, uh, sometimes they get a bad rap. I have not found them to be overly aggressive. I've had them in with peacocks and haps and even some semi-aggressive community fish without having any issues. But if you wanted to start out with yellow labs, this is a great fish that offers a little bit of contrasting color. So you get the yellows with the yellow labs, of course. You get the blue with the ACI, and then you get this nice deep orange color with the red zebras. Really cool fish, not superly overly aggressive in the right setup. Again, with the fish that I've talked about so far, that could certainly be a successful start to cichlid fish keeping. This is another great fish. This is the electric blue acara. Uh, these are relatively peaceful fish. We've got them here, about nine of them in a 40 gallon breeder. You can see here, fins are all looking great. They're not super aggressive. They're not beating each other up. Uh, I've had them in larger community tanks with you know, larger sized fish, semi-aggressive community fish without any issues. I would say these are very, very mellow as far as cichlids go. Uh, they would do fine. You know, again, you can see their size and these aren't quite full grown. The one in the 150 gallon is a little bit larger. Uh, they probably do best in at least a 40 gallon breeder like this tank or larger, but relatively peaceful, very easy to care for. You can see they're not, you know, destroying the plants or digging up the substrate or anything like that. But every time I've kept these fish in a community setting, they have been really peaceful. Uh, no issues whatsoever. This again is a nice fish if you're looking for that larger community setup. This, you know, having one of these is like a, sh uh, you know, a showcase fish, like kind of like your, you know, your main guy with maybe some tetras and maybe some quarry cats or something like that. Uh, you could definitely have a pretty awesome tank with one of these fish in there. This is another cool fish. This is Cryptoheris sahika. Uh, we've got about eight or nine in a 40 gallon breeder, as you can see here. What I love about these fish is they are the same genus as like, let's say our convicts, but they stay smaller and they're not nearly as aggressive. Again, you can see here, we've got quite a few of them. They leave each other alone. 
They're not, you know, chasing each other around up into corners and stuff. I would say if you had one in a community tank, it would probably do quite well with some tetras and maybe some quarry cats. Uh, but relatively peaceful fish. They get some cool color. And I've noticed that the color can be slightly different depending on the fish. So some of them might have a little bit more red, some a little bit more orange. And they just, they're really cool. These ones here are about a year old and they're probably the biggest one that you see, maybe three inches. Uh, they'll get a little bit bigger. They might get four inches or so, maybe slightly larger. But again, if you've got a, you know, maybe a 29 gallon and above, this is a relatively peaceful fish that would fit pretty well, I think, into a, a general community tank. So uh, definitely something worth considering. And of course, here we've got the Bolivian ram. This is a great fish, relatively peaceful. We've got a couple here in a 20 long. Uh, nice color, great personality. They tend to stay pretty mellow. They generally don't bother too many other fish. At least that's what we've found. And I've kept them in many different types of setups. And they are pretty good inhabitants no matter where you keep them. Stay relatively small. Maybe they're going to get around three, three and a half inches. I've seen strains that have gotten larger. But for the most part, they're going to stay pretty small, pretty mellow definitely worth considering in a community tank. And then here we've got Cryptoherus nanoludius. Uh, these fish are relatively young. They will, uh, they are the same genus as the Sahikas that we saw. Uh, they are on the same genus as convicts, but they are definitely a more peaceful sort of fish. They are gonna stay on the small side, right, right around three inches. They get really cool yellow colors with blue eyes. And again, this is a fish where if I had one in a community tank, it would probably work out pretty well with some tetras and, you know, and the quarry cats and your, your basic community fish. Uh, for the most part, they leave each other alone. Uh, they leave other fish alone. At least that's been our experience. They're not hard on plants. They're not digging through the substrate too much. So uh, certainly a fish worth considering. This is another fish I would consider. This is pelvic acromis sub ocelatus. They're very closely related to Crebenzis, and that's why I include them here. Any Crebenzis type cichlid is probably gonna be a fairly good fit in a community tank. So if you had one as a showpiece in a community tank, it would probably work out pretty well. Now, I'm assuming in all of this that these fish are not actively breeding in a community tank because once they do that, that changes things considerably. They can get considerably more aggressive. For the yellow labs, the ACI, and the red zebra that I showed you earlier in the video, I would assume once again that they're going to be pretty much in a tank on their own, that you're not trying to mix those three fish into a community tank. But pretty much everything I've showed you outside of those three and the Maltese, uh, the rest of these fish could potentially, if you had one in a community tank, they'd probably work out pretty well. Again, cichlids are, you know, they're, they're, each fish can be somewhat unique. Most of the time, I include them on this list because most of the time they're going to be pretty good inhabitants of a community tank. You can always have one that, you know, goes a little crazy and maybe is a little bit more aggressive than, you know, the, the normal type that you would see out there. But again, most of these things are going to do well in a community tank. They offer some color, they offer some personality, and that's what keeps things interesting. All right, everybody. So those are some of the cichlids that we think are good for beginners that we have in our fish room. Again, that list is a little bit different because it includes fish that are here. Some of them are common, like the yellow labs, the red zebras, the ACI. Those are pretty common fish. The Maltese are relatively common, but things like the Sahikas and the Nanoludius, uh, maybe the pelvic acromis are a little bit different but they're still really awesome fish, something that you could potentially put in a community tank and not have a lot of problems. So if you like this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.